Welcome, Donna. Donna is, an, is the council member of the SDSN Hong Kong Leadership Council. Donna is an executive manager of the charity uh, for the uh, Grand making in, in the uh, sport and environment okay, of the Hong Kong Jockey Cup, who is responsible for planning and recommending fund strategy a new charities project initiative driving the implementation of the trust project and processing funding application. Adonna, then I should, I should contact you to get some funding. <laughs> sure, we're always open to wonderful ideas. Okay, <laughs> then it's, ti it's time it's time for you to, to, yeah, to, to speak, okay? Sure, thank you very much. Thank yeah. you, thanks for the kind introduction. So yeah. I will just get ready for my presentation. Thank you again, Felix, for the very kind introduction. And first of all, um, congratulations to Green Council for its 20th anniversary and all the wonderful work you have been doing in the past 20 years. So um, thanks again for inviting us to the webinar today and um, the tremendous effort actually in putting together this um, program. And a lot of interesting topics um, lined up today and I'm very excited to you know, listen to other um, wonderful speakers today. So um, sustainable development is actually a very big topic. And um, today I hope to share some of our experience from um, the philanthropic um, perspective, working towards sustainable development and the SDGs. And our strong belief in the importance of cross-sector collaboration to work together for the betterment of the society. So uh, just a little bit of background, and actually Felix touched a little bit on it already. Um, so um, the United Nations um, Sustainable Development Solutions Network, um, what we usually call the UNSDSN, um, operates since um, the 2012 under the auspices of the UN Secretary General to support the implementation of the SDGs. And we all know that the um, 70 SDGs were actually adopted at the um, UN Sustainable Development Summit in 2015. And um, it's actually a platform um, for knowledge sharing and network building, and um, mainly through education, through research, policy analysis, and global cooperation. So um, for the Hong Kong chapter of the UNSDSN, actually, um, the Jockey Club was uh, very unfortunate to be um, invited to um, set up the Hong Kong chapter. And uh, about two years ago, we um, established the Hong Kong network and co-hosted the um, UN um, at the SCSN HK with them, the Chinese University of Hong Kong. So currently the network is chaired by um, the Jockey Club's um, um, Executive Director of um, Charities and Community, Mr. Leon Zhang, and also CU HK's Vice Chancellor, Dr. Duan, uh, Professor Duan. So um, not really to um, advertise here, but um, if you're interested in um, the network and also for more information, you are um, free, uh, feel free to contact us anytime. So um, if we put ourselves um, internationally, we are actually among the top 10 foundations globally. And, um, but what we have been trying to do in the past years, especially in the past six years, it's we try to do something more than just the numbers because um, instead of just looking at the donation numbers, we, uh, we have been working hard to see what we, we can actually do more to um, create a bigger impact. So um, since um, 2014, we adopted a more um, strategic approach. And um, the aim is to actually create broader and deeper impact. So um, while we continue to support a diverse range of projects, the trust is evolving in the past years. And um, from a preliminary, uh, a primarily more reactive or grant approval, approval approach, which means that a long time ago, maybe we just uh, receive applications from our applicants and then we do some, um, uh, based on paper, we do a lot of um, analysis and then we tell the um, grantee you know, whether the application is approved. But um, nowadays we want to take a more proactive approach and try to be a social change catalyst. So a lot of times we will actually try to form our house views, um, especially in the four um, major areas that's uh, listed here, including youth, elderly sports, arts and culture and heritage. So we try to understand more about um, the social needs and the social issues. And then we work closely with our partners and a lot of times to actually develop solutions together um, in a close partnership. So um, in, in addition to hardware, in the past years, we also increased our donation on program, what we usually call a software program, instead of um, building a lot of hardware or capital projects. So um, some time ago, um, maybe 80% of our donation would be on hardware. 
but uh, in recent years it's about like 50 50 so we are also investing a lot on software programs that will touch on the lives of um, different um, segments in the community and we also increase donation to first-time grantees and expand reach and support capacity building to more credible ngos in other words we try to um, um, collaborate with um, more um, different NGOs. So um, in addition to the four strategic themes, there are actually four um, sector-wide strategies as well, which I would like to share here. Um, first of all, we are promoting the use of technology for social good. We um, encourage social innovation, um, especially in the NGO sector. And also we build sector capacity, especially in small and medium-sized NGOs. And more importantly, we want to promote collaboration across organizations and sectors, which we think collaboration is really important nowadays, especially a lot of the problems that we are facing are quite complicated and complex and no one um, single um, organization will be able to tackle the problem thoroughly. So um, back to the SDGs, actually from our funding in the past years, we um, the trust funded projects covered all the 17 SDGs. And there's one that we believe has very special meaning to our projects, and it's key to create social impact, which is um, SDG 17, Partnerships for the Goals. And in particular, we think it's very important for us to encourage um, effective partnerships because it's very important for us to use our collective wisdom and through knowledge sharing to come up with um, meaningful solutions and projects. And it's very important that we exchange our um, knowledge, uh, our different expertise, leverage on each other, and also through um, the network of different partners to reach out to our target segments and also understand the needs of different people at the very frontline level. And we believe that only through effective partnership, our projects, our ideas can um, be sustained in a much longer term. So um, we strongly believe that um, cross-sector collaboration is key. So um, in recent years, um, we have invested resources to develop what we call trust initiative projects. So um, basically, um, it's projects that we will um, spend more resources to um, understand, to deep dive into um, understanding the social issues and form a house views. And we will actively, uh, proactively um, uh, look for partners to come up with solutions together and um, for a longer term uh, project and hopefully to create a um, uh, longer term impact and uh, create sustainable solutions to um, various problems we, um, we, we find in the society. So uh, just to give you an overview of some of our tips, what we call TIPs, um, we have um, so far created about 14 TIPs, and these are all multi-year commitment to tackle complex social issues through um, cross-sectoral collaboration. And um, I'm not sure if you can recognize any of these um, projects, but um, it ranges from, you know, um, supporting young children to learn um, sports or um, ethnic minority young children to learn Chinese, to um, coding education and to um, projects that support the elders. So um, all these TIPs cover various themes and contribute to multiple SDGs. So, um, one of the um, TIP projects that I would like to um, share a little bit more today, it's uh, the Jockey Club Age Friendly City Project. So um, some of you may know that actually um, aging is an, uh, it's a challenge that Hong Kong is facing, especially in coming years, because in 20 years time, it is forecasted that one third of Hong Kong's population will be elderly people. So um, with reference to the eight domains in the um, urban environments identified by the um, WHO that support active and healthy aging, um, we have um, developed a five and a half year project adopting a bottom up and district based approach to develop Hong Kong into an age friendly city. And the key is we actually have a partnership with a lot of different um, people, for example, um, four um, local universities, um, 18 district councils, the government, NGOs, business sectors, and also other community stakeholders. And the ultimate um, objective of the project are to build momentum in districts to develop an age-friendly community and to recommend a framework for districts to undertake continual improvement for the well-being of our senior citizens, and also to arouse public awareness and encourage community participation in building an age-friendly city. So, um, so um, actually, we'd also like to share the good news that actually this um, um, TIP 
has been selected as one of the eight solutions globally to be presented in the Global Solutions Forum um, 2020 under United Nations SDSN. And um, this uh, actually gives you an overview of the collaboration, which because we would like to talk about, um, you know, how we collaborate to um, come up with um, the solution for um, H20C. So um, we can you can tell from this graph that actually we are we have been collaborating with various partners and stakeholders. Um, while the club um, or charities trusts are um, initiating and steering the direction of the project, we try to line up um, project partners and also um, gather the government support to promote the um, H20C concept and also engage and collaborate with district councils and NGOs to enhance the age friendliness in all the 18 districts. And um, and very importantly, we have uh, we need the expertise from um, the academia. So um, the four universities that involved in the program include um, the Chinese University of Hong Kong, um, the University of Hong Kong, Lam University, and also um, Poly U. Um, very important, they provided comprehensive support for all the 16, the 18 districts because you can tell they're actually. Um, coming from different areas in Hong Kong, and that's why they work closely with different districts. And um, they, contact, they conducted um, baseline and final assessment, and they organized ambassador training, and also supported district-based programs organized by the NGOs. So they are like the, the, the think tank behind this program and giving us all the expertise about um, age-friendly to um, the community. But of course, because this is a program that's um, ultimately um, for the benefit of the people, so um, we engage the um, 18 district councils and um, it's very important because only the district councils or the people in the district may be able to know more about the district or the issues that are facing. So um, we actually work closely with the district councils with the support of the um, universities and their findings from the baseline and um, other assessments to formulate action plans to enhance the age friendliness of the um, 18 districts. And um, also, um, all the 18 districts have successfully joined the WHO Global Network for Age Friendly Cities and Communities, which is quite an achievement because um, in most other countries, um, it's very um, city based. But in Hong Kong, we go into like district um, bottom up based um, approach, um, which is very special um, around the world. And this is the only um, uh, Hong Kong is the only place with other uh, involvement or the certification uh, at district level. So um, apart from the um, district councils, very importantly, we engage various NGOs. Um, we have almost 80 um, NGOs supporting various programs. And all these district-based programs are um, developed together with the district councils and with the support of the um, universities, such that we know what's, uh, the, the, what the elders in each um, districts are concerned about and the programs are tailor-made for them. And um, another in interesting part about this uh, Tips. It's that um, we are jointly uh, we have the joint participation of business and public sectors. Um, we have over 80 um, MNCs and SMEs, companies and organizations supporting this program. Um, recently, we launched the um, uh, Age Friendly City Partnership Scheme, um, encouraging and certifying companies um, or organizations which have adopted age friendly practices. And special awards will be given to the companies or organizations with outstanding performance on age friendly practices, services, and products. And as we mentioned, um, because we want to do more public um, education and arouse public awareness, we are also partnering with uh, the media. So media partnership is another um, a stakeholder, another collaboration we have in this program. Um, because different mass media and social media platforms actually help us to um, promote the um, age-friendly um, city concept to the public. And also keep the um, public aware of um, what's going on and um, all the activities that's happening and how we should um, respect um, the, the needs of um, the, the elder citizens in Hong Kong. So um, this pretty much um, shows how the collaboration of the program works. And some key achievements to share. And um, as mentioned, um, all the 18 districts joined the WHO um, AFC network as members now. And we have trained over 2,000 AFC ambassadors. And we are very happy that we are able to um, engage um, about 80 um, NGOs and community organizations. Um, about 128 district-based programs have been approved and implemented. And we are directly 
um, benefiting um, 110,000 elderly people through the programs. So um, on, the other, on the other hand, we are engaging um, 80 plus companies, organizations who are participating in the city partnership scheme. And also um, through our media and also our social media, we have been reaching a, a large part of the general public. And they have been participating in um, publicity activities and also public education activities. So um, we find that it's very important that, um, you know, um, from the base of this um, pyramid um, to do public education, to raise awareness. And we have engaged, um, for example, RTHK, Radio 5, and all our um, partners in the media and also different um, organizations and companies to support the program. And um, knowledge transfer and community legacy would be very important. And that's why we are very um, um, grateful that um, the universities help us to do all the baseline assessment studies and formulate the action plans with the 18 district councils. And uh, some districts also set up a platform to collect opinion of older people in community. And from this, you know, this program can sustain in the longer term. And uh, another area is the capacity building for the community. We have trained the um, ambassadors, which actually they are also very important partners in the program and collaborating with us together to um, deliver the program in the different districts. And um, we have um, also um, this model, pioneering the service model with great impact. So um, with this great collaborative efforts of the government, district councils, academia, NGOs, etc. We hope that um, this um, this um, framework actually can show all possibilities. It can be um, not just um, age friendly or elders program. It can be environment programs. It can be sports program. It can be youth program. But um, I think this model. Um, I hope that um, by sharing this model, we have um, we can understand all the possibilities that we can collaborate with different stakeholders to um, work on a, a common goal together. So um, also just a quick um, resident sharing um, about our efforts in COVID-19. Uh, the club has been responding very quickly to um, COVID-19 challenges with a committed um, 346 billion Hong Kong dollars to support a, very, uh, a series of initiatives. Um, I think um, in short, um, we are very grateful that we were able to um, have a very trusted relationship with uh, many of our um, NGOs in the society. So. Um, Around the New Year's time, when there's the, there was the outbreak, we very quickly, um, um, with the collaboration of um, our community partners, we um, alleviate the panic and provide essential services. We funded uh, 53 million of care packs and anti-epidemic packs and distributed 14.8 um, million surgical masks to the community, especially to the vulnerable groups. And um, later on, we uh, immediately launched a um, emergency fund of um, $100 million um, to um, empower the um, NGOs. And we supported over 200 partners to provide urgent support to the community in the areas of providing hygiene and protective um, supplies um, to support urgent access to um, safety and educational information and also urgent assistance to cope with the disruptions. So these projects are very, um, um, very, we, we call it do day because um, in a sense that um, the NGOs knows the needs of the um, the needs of the um, vulnerable groups very well, and they are able to leverage um, on their expertise to um, do something very quickly and um, directly to the those in need. And sub subsequently, we um, supported uh, we we set up another fund, the Community Sustainability Fund, um, to support non supported NGOs and sports organizations to carry out um, service programs for those in need. And um, another breakthrough, I would say, is we actually um, collaborate with the business. So um, understanding um, the schools are closed and students have to learn from home. And the less privileged students are often um, actually um, do not have the resources to go online because their data plan could be limited. So we uh, collaborate with um, four um, mobile carriers and provide free mobile internet data bandwidth um, to over um, 100,000 um, underprivileged primary and secondary school students. So um, this is also um, experience that gives us a new co collaboration model to see how we may leverage on each other's expertise and resources and to provide timely support to those in need. So um, looking ahead, um, we are still facing different challenges, obviously, and social issues and many uncertainties. Um, COVID-19 is definitely not yet over, unfortunately. Um, we could be facing economic downturn, which the vulnerable groups may suffer most. 
And on the other hand, we are facing all sorts of climate change, environmental issues. Many of them are irreversible. And um, many of the issues are actually unprecedented and very complex. But I think we should um, all stay hopeful. And um, particularly in this challenging time in particular, I think collaboration and collaboration among different sectors will be the key for us to move forward and further together. So um, that concludes my sharing today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Thank you for your quick presentation. Thank you. Um, I have some question for you. Hope oh, you, you can. <laughs> yeah, because I know that you have some time. Huh? Okay. Um, in fact, cost sector collaboration among different organizations have never, uh, not, not easy. Right. How do you encourage the um, collaboration among different organizations from a bottom, bottom up approach? Right. I think um, we start with trust. And um, also, I think communication is very important. Um, Bottom-up approach meaning that uh, we should know, um, uh, based on our expertise, uh, we know what's needed in the community. And I think um, when we um, find the different issues and we have um, different ideas how to uh, resolve the problems, it's very important that we um, communicate with each other and communicate thoroughly our thoughts and the rationale behind why we are you know, thinking certain um, solutions. And through the communication, I think um, by understanding each other and appreciating each other's expertise and uh, knowledge, I think that's how we can actually cross um, collaborate through different sectors. Mm, okay. Um, yeah, because we are, all, we are, we are NGO, um, can you share some of the um, tips for successful application of your fund? <laughs> Okay, uh, it's actually not as hard as you think. <laughs> we are very open and we always love to um, start with um, ideas and um, you know, actually talk with each other and discuss possible um, funding uh, yeah. projects. But I think um, what, we, what we usually look at is um, how we first identify um, problems or social issues. We identify in the society and um, from those uh, issues, um, what are the solutions and uh, why do we think those solutions are actually, um, you know, um, can actually tackle the issues? And then we'll look at, you know, if the NGO or its collaborator got the expertise or with the um, track record of the, or the experience in um, delivering mm -hmm. um, such solutions. Of course, sometimes we understand that, that um, it has to be innovative and it's to be something new that we will try. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, after that, um, it will be we will be looking at um, whether the um, cost or the um, budget is um, justifiable, mm -hmm. and uh, that's pretty much it. So um, of course we also look at um, the um, the impact that we think um, the the project can bring, and also how we um, measure the outcome and output, and mm -hmm. that's how we look at you know an application. And we are always um, happy to you know discuss and develop the program or the the project together with the um, NGOs. Mm -hmm. um, I believe not all the projects are successful. Mm. Okay, could you share some of the the, 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 the the most common failure case situation of this kind of project, <laughs> such um, that some of the applicants won't repeat? Actually, we are quite fortunate and most of the NGOs would um, would um, achieve what they um, committed. But um, of course, we also understand that there can be uncontrolled um, situations. For example, recently in the COVID-19, a lot of our programs have to stop. Okay. Uh, and I think it's the flexibility that allow that we would allow for um, the programs. Sometimes when we plan everything, it may not work out as planned, obviously. And we are open to, you know, when you are um, implementing the project, if you observe anything um, new, um, we will try to um, see if we have to adjust the program mm -hmm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, and also uh, continually, we will um, get feedback from our users and um, see, you know, if there are actually improvement adjustments that we need to make for the program. So mm -hmm. um, we, I think it's the flexibility part that um, we think uh, and the ongoing um, feedback loop that's important so that um, we, um, we won't really say, you know, there's a failure, but when we observe something that's not going as well as we planned, we probably want to make adjustment and see how we can create the most from the program or the resources that we have for all the programs that we supported. 
Um, then I think this question is about um, SDG. Right. Yeah, because I, I know that you are also representing SDG Hong Kong mm -hmm. to promote the SDG. In fact, I would like to uh, uh, get your comment. How's the uh, SDG being being acknowledged or mm. being in really tackled by the company in Hong Kong? Right. I think you you actually are the expert. You are actually you actually know better than me. Uh, but I think for us, um, I think the um corporations are actually doing quite a lot, and a lot of times they actually um report to the SDGs. But I think that's something that we can do more to see how we can properly um um report um the SDG in a lot of our um the corporations um reports. But um for um educating the public or the students, I think we probably have to do more. And um to be very honest, I think um. Our platform, um, um, SDS and Hong Kong, is actually um, exploring the possibilities how to put the SDGs into the curriculum, for example, for university students, okay. and also make it more fun or more easy to digest because 70 SDGs is actually quite difficult to just just memorize, yeah. and there's no meaning just you know memorizing it. So uh, we were thinking of possible programs to actually make it um, you know more experiential learning for um, for example primary and secondary school students um, in terms of games etc for them to understand maybe selected um, SDGs as most relevant to the Hong Kong context mm -hmm. to start with mm -hmm. and then to have an overview of the SDG. So uh, it has to do a lot with um, actually creating creating a curriculum for um, the younger generation to understand the SDGs. So um, a lot of work still have to be done. Uh, have to be done. If anyone got any good um, ideas, welcome to approaches, and we'll be happy to discuss further to see what we can do. Mm, yeah, thank you. That means we can submit some funding for the education <laughs> RCG. <laughs> we okay. can certainly discuss further. Thank you, right. thank you, Donna. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you, thank yes, you. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you Donna.